Um, all right, Mum, so you've got your earbuds in so you can hear I do. us. Don't ask me anything too tricky. Welcome back for another episode of Not Another Parenting Podcast. Catherine Mahoney, today's a very special one, isn't it? Oh, it's emotion. I feel emotional just thinking about this episode. We're channeling a bit of heartfelt sort of, you know, Mother's Day. It's a Mother's Day edition because we celebrate this day that is thankfully there for the toughest job in the world. The absolute hardest job in the world gets a day of recognition where, do you know what always makes me laugh because my husband on this day goes, do you know what, you get to sit with the kids and I will make breakfast. And I say, (laughs) "Uh, no, I'll make breakfast, you sit with the kids. There is no joy in me having to play with them again. You were at work all week. I'll I'll make make my own pancakes, thanks very much. A hundred (laughs) percent. Anyway, it is very special, uh, especially because kicking us off today, the lovely Anne Mahoney, who not only is joining us from the UK, but we've managed to get on the Zoom. I know. I did have a wonderful hour of bonding with my parents uh, yesterday, mm. going through the Zoom and how to use it. Oh, and, um, you. and so, you know, I look back and I think that's a memory. That's something we can't physically see each other. We've been apart for 15 months. God knows when I'll see them. Oh, yeah. We were able to have uh, some Zoom time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, mum and dad are going to um, fashion the room so that it looks a bit better. I love that you deep. would We've do that. We've gone real deep. Yeah, mum's going to get a, a stylist in and she might, you know, even have a makeover. All right. Well, it. we're going to yeah. get her on the line for Cannot chat. wait. But she is over in the UK. Uh, Anne Mahoney, desperate to get her on. But obviously I couldn't be in here at the same time that we needed to do the recording. It was uh, very late in the evening with the kids. So you might notice that I'm on Zoom. It's a little bit different, but we are going to cross over to the UK, catch up with Kath's mum right now. Welcome, Anne Mahoney. Thank you. Well, Anne, you're joining us because obviously Mother's Day is uh, is just around the corner. We're only a few days away. Australian Mother's Day. I realise it's different over in yes, the UK. Yes, yes. Um, but, uh, you know, I, we wanted to talk a little bit about the beautiful Catherine because, you know, she is known to share one or two stories with us, but it's always different coming from a parental perspective. Starting with something a little bit broad, I guess, uh, how you see parenting as being different because, you know, your children have children. Uh, how you see it as being different now to when you were raising kids? I think one of the, the big differences for a mother, my generation, the 70s into the 80s, well, we didn't have careers. Mm. So you were a full-time mother. That's what you did. I think women nowadays have got a, a more of a, hey, what about me? Do you as think well that's as, a good or a bad thing? I don't think you could go back. And I think it, some mothers do want that whole baby thing and that's fine I think the thing is there isn't a set thing that you should be this or you should be that Mm. you should be what suits you what was Catherine like as a child (laughs) awesome (laughs) (laughs) no Kath not you I want to hear it from Matt (laughs) um she was um, a lovely baby people were attracted to her in her pram I don't know if it's a UK thing or it's just from the past, but when people used to, adults used to see a baby, they'd get their purse out and and get some, you know, a few coins and pop. (laughs) It was like for good looking for the child. You gave a child silver, you know. So so she she accumulated quite a bank account. So you just push her around with a begging bowl. (laughs) it's not quite begging. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I saw the light of day of any of that money, Sarah. <laughs> Excuse sure. me. Sarah, there was once I was in Boots the Chemist and I'm at the checkout and I see my daughter of about 13 year old coming out of the bank, wandering three shops up and going into the surf shop and coming out with the bag. And I thought, where the hell did she get the money? She had ripped into this bank account that I had saved since the prom days and bought herself some pale green, I don't know what you call them, like um, Bermuda shorts, you know, like culottes. (laughs) Very cute. I nearly killed her. Cat. So that's some embarrassing moments. Thanks for that, Mum. You've got to be proud of something I've done, though. I think one of the big things is... The way she bounces back from adversity, from disaster, from crisis, 
we get the call and you feel sick because they're not happy. But you can guarantee within a couple of days, Catherine comes back with some kind of a positive attitude, you know, some kind of move forward, you know. She was always a good kid. She she was always interested in other people. She used to go to the old lady next door when we lived in Wales, who had a son who must have been in his 40s, Robert, and he was deaf. And Catherine learned how to sign on the hand oh, okay. so he could that she could talk with him you know so they're the kind of little things that at the time as a parent you just let pass by you know but when you look back as your days of being a parent you think god I didn't take enough notice of that you know and yeah and say anything and what about exes I mean were there any boyfriends that sort of had you you know a little bit nervous all of them. <laughs> well, the, the one who was a lot, lot older than her, that oh. had me a bit nervous. I think she was 17 and he was been about 24. That's no, he was 27. Important. He was a full 10 years older. Yes. <laughs> she, she lied at the time. She must have lied. I think you edit. I don't think it's lying. I think it's editing. That's what it is. Did you ever catch Catherine out in a really big lie? Not yet. <laughs> Still time, Anne. Still would, time. No, I would have to say her her brother used to fume at what she got away with, oh. and we knew nothing about, and he got away with nothing. <laughs> I probably don't know exactly. What Best not, Anne. Shouldn't know. Best not. <laughs> One thing I wanted to know: what's different between being a parent and then being a grandma? I think the, the big, if it was one word, would be responsibility. As a parent, you're responsible. Mm -hmm. As a grandparent, it's not your responsibility. If you're asked, you can give advice, but generally it's not my job. It's up to you how he turns out, you know? Mm. Oh, Sorry. The baby. Oh. Hello. <laughs> hi. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Really, you say hi, hi to Lisa. everybody? Hi. 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 Do you want to sit on the floor nice and quiet for me? Yeah. I'm just finishing something. Um, well, Mum, I've got to say that I, I feel very honoured that uh, I got you as a mum. Um, you know, even though I've I started to do mum faces and, you know, mm. some of the mum lines that you rolled out, I've started to say them to Lewis and I'm like, oh my God, I sound like my mum. But uh, I, yeah, I, I couldn't have asked for a better mum. And I'm so, so proud of the example that you sort of set for me and for Sarah and for James, my brother and sister, who will be listening. Um, I love, I love that, you know, as you, as you were getting to the end of your 30s, that you, you decided that you wanted to expand not just being a mum because mum's a full-time job but you know you went you went to you went to study English literature you went off to university at 40 you know and then you became a, a teacher and you had you had a second go at life and and that's definitely been a huge inspiration for me and uh, I'm very proud of you mum just wanted to say that thank you I'm yeah it's amazing and the way Kath speaks about you and I know it must be tough for you guys all being separated but she just loves you guys so much and misses you and <laughs> Yeah, do you I, want me to cry? No, Sorry. I nearly cry. Then I no, nearly cry. I, I feel like crying like, for you because oh. I know how much I miss my sister, and I, I just, you know, as soon as borders are up, we're taking you lunch. Yeah, you can't get out of it. And you're then... gonna have a full meal, but no, thank you, thank you. I know it's um, yeah, it's a tough state of the world at the moment, and um, and yeah, Kath misses you greatly, and you've done a beautiful job because she is um, she is everything you said before, and um, and you should be so proud of her. Sorry, my kid's just going to take all the time. I know. Does he know what sort of podcast this is? This is not one where we embrace children. Willie, Willie, go to the go to the toilet. I'll be in there in a sec. Just sit there till I get there. We're not even staging this. This is actual real life parents happening folks as we, as we go but no well, I, parents I, don't leave their kids on the toilet but that's okay yeah <laughs> no it's fine he's not going to flush himself he's too big isn't he <laughs> he's still he's not a goldfish but mum thank you for coming on yes Four, 14 months since I've seen you and uh no. yeah it is tough to say the least yeah thank goodness for modern technology as a mum I thought I was past being pestered the minute I went to the loo no, it still happens and my kid is 19. 
Mum, thanks for coming on. We, we were just chatting with Kath's beautiful mother, Anne, who's over in the UK. And we were sort of just getting in. One of the first things we asked her, how she really thought being a parent is different now to how it was when you guys were doing it. One of the things she pointed out was obviously that now there's this sort of idea that you have to keep trying to do it all. You know, it's the work and the home, whereas you guys, when it was your generation, it was really like parenting was full time. You weren't supposed to be looking for anything else because you were so busy. We had time to feel bad about being a parent as well in the sense that, oh my God, you know, this is so mindless. Whereas you've all got careers and things. And I think that distracts you from the parenting job. So it it actually gives you an an alternative. And, you know, I mean, you said to me the other day when you had two weeks on holiday, Mm. oh my God, I can't wait to get back to work. You know, she said, I hate being a parent. (laughs) Okay. All right. I mean, you you, you don't have to get too real today. Yeah. (laughs) But, but, but it's not, it's not that you really hate being a parent. It's just that (laughs) because you're actually a great parent. I think you're also trying to do a lot of other things as well, whereas we didn't have other things to do. Speaking of uh, young children, Vicky, what was Sarah like as a youngster? I've got four children and she was my perfect child, but she used to do some weird and wonderful things. I just, <laughs> she always, from a, uh, almost from the time she was born, she slept on a sheepskin rug and she'd pluck it and then have um, bits of fur in her fingers, but she'd suck her tongue as well. So she didn't look all that attractive Thanks, Mom. while she was doing all this. <laughs> But then she would put these bits of wool in her nose or up her okay, ear, uh, in okay. her ears. <laughs> to clarify that before you continue, in my tongue, I will show you, Kath. <laughs> Look. So oh. when I was, what, two? Who is that? Dad one. Was one. One. Dad was painting. I don't know how I had teeth. And I slipped and hit my chin on a tin of paint and my teeth went through my tongue. Oh, yeah. And it never healed. So when I would be tired or d- looking like a dummy style thing, my top teeth sits in the groove and I would suck back and forth like you would a pacifier. That's a little yeah. bit weird. It was very <laughs> weird. Mum, tell me, um, my older sister is named Kate, and there's always this story being bandied around that Kate fell out a window. Now, how did she that did. come about? Well, she was one, probably, and they were, they were just windows to the ground, and you would lift them up, and they were fly screens. Anyway, she leant on the fly screen and then shot out the window. <laughs> no. And... Um, <laughs> So she had this huge gash in her head and I didn't really know what to do. So I rang Dave, the dad, and I drove her to him and he stitched her up on the spot <laughs> in the car. He's a doctor. We can say that He's to not the an accountant. Audience. He's not yeah. just no, 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 he was a doctor. But, but he did it in the car because he was out on a call. And um, so we just, I held her down, lay on top of her and he stitched her up. Yeah. Wow. So, so, so um, no wonder your family really didn't care when you dropped William. No. Like, no, no I'd gone no. through way worse very low, that fall. Yeah, very low very, key. Very low key. <laughs> and yeah. what sort of mum do you think Sarah's making, Vicky, so far? Uh, do you know what? I, I'm, I'm incredibly proud. That's sort of probably one of the, you know, you hope your children when they get to sort of adulthood um, do you proud. But seeing Sarah, in fact, both my girls, being parents has been extraordinary. Sarah is very level-headed. She's got a lot of common sense. She doesn't stress the sort of um, the minor stuff and she doesn't read too many books. I always think that's the, <laughs> sort of the bonus. Don't read. <laughs> that's been me well, for life. I just well, don't read that much yeah, information. Because I think it undermines confidence in your parenting because nobody's perfect at it. And I think you just have to go with your gut. You know, if they don't eat anything for two days, you know what, they're not going to starve unless they're sick. (laughs) They are not going to starve, Mm. you know, and I just think, and if they don't eat vegetables, well, you know what, there are lots of kids that don't eat vegetables. They come to it in the end. That's one of the things I've been very lucky. Obviously you and dad are very much like that. And then coupled in with, you know, dad being a doctor and then, you know, mum's worked with dad for so many years and the two of you having that level of information, because I, I was telling someone this morning, actually, I was thinking back to when William was about one or maybe 18 months old and I took him to the GP and she told me your baby is too big. 
big and he will grow up and be bullied. And I left and... and what? Ca- yeah, and I called mum on the way home and just sobbed and said, my God, he's 18 months old and already I'm going to be responsible for his bullying. Like that's already in my head that as a teenager he'll get bullied because he's going to be fat. And the thing is he'd come out big, you know, 4.3 kilos. He's a formula baby, so he was always big from that. Then he just ate lots and he's continued that way. He wears size 5 clothing. Sometimes it's too small on him and he's three years old. And I just remember mum and dad both being A, horrified that a doctor would say it because I don't sit there and give the kid cans of Coke and B, that I was so upset because really, as they both said, you know, that kids have these growth spurts and, he's, you know, they stretch out. I mean, William's already past my hips, you know. It's just ridiculous. But I think they're the sort of things that I appreciate having – you know, as well as the free babysitting, uh, having got from you guys because, you know, without that sort of stuff, I I don't think I'd be able to function as a parent because you can get caught in your own head. You can always function as a parent, Seth. You know, well, that's I think what alcohol's for, isn't it? Yeah. No, no, not in not the morning. Sarah, not in the no. morning, and not, think, and not for the children either. No, no that's right. No judgment. <laughs> they used to give babies gin. Did they? In the old, what are some of the other funny things? Because I remember, um, what was it, the lamb's, lamb's wool or something you kept trying to put on my nipples? And I was like, please, let's cut this out. I don't know what that is. No, uh, uh, it's that, a grown-up. Uh, um, yeah. Anhydrous lanolin was wool fat. And yeah. in my day, um, you know, when you were breastfeeding, you used to put that on to stop cracks and things in the nipple. Mm. But um, the, that's, the that's midwives... That's pudding for James. Well, but, but it's, like, it's like really thick grease. What about Guinness to bring on? That was uh, I remember your sister saying to me because I was having trouble with milk supply and she said Guinness and I, I want to say someone else recommended oatmeal cookies or something. That's all rubbish, isn't it? Well, I, I don't know. Guinness is full of vitamin B. Right. Um, but I suppose if you really liked it and it, and it does the trick. Well, you'd be too drunk um, to breastfeed anyway, so it doesn't well, matter. No, no, no. Well, yeah, I think yeah, I think everything in moderation, Seth. Yes. <laughs> um, Vicky, you've obviously got four beautiful children yourself um, and now you've got two sets of grandchildren. How does it differ from being a mum to being a grandparent? Oh, it's like chalk and cheese. I'm such a better grandparent than I ever was a parent. <laughs> no. Um, it's true. I was a shocking parent compared to, a, like, uh, you know, I don't raise my voice to uh, to grandchildren, whereas I, I feel as a parent I used to, my voice used to be continually raised. And, yeah, you just love them unconditionally. Um, oh, okay. And that's different to your kids. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I never, I never loved you all unconditionally. I, I, there were days, there were some days that were much worse than others. Do you know what Mum said the other day? As she's leaving my house. She's dropped in. I look like I'm just right on the edge. She's dropped in, looked at the situ, and gone. Oh, I've actually got to go. And I said, you've got to be kidding. Don't leave. And she said, well, I'm just going to go home and watch Bridget. And, <laughs> and off she went. I said, you. <laughs> anyway, I yeah, get no, it. I, I, I've done my time. Yeah, yeah. I've done my time. Vicky, well, before we let you go, and I'm sure there's a million things that you could answer for this, but uh, what's one of the things that you're most proud of from uh, Sarah? I'd have to say probably her parenting. You know, I just think she does such a lovely job. She's always been a really lovely girl all through school, uh, even at preschool. Everybody wanted to play with Sarah. It, she's always been very popular at school. And, you know, this has um, come over to her, her um, parenting. You know, she's kind and gentle and um, She's not perfect. I'm not suggesting that, but she don't back out now. You're on a winner. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you know she does have very good bones. Let's say she yeah. absolutely um, does. Well, I learned from yeah. the best. Thanks, Mum. That's it for us. Well, that was a bit of a lovely one. Yeah, no, I feel like I didn't make quite as many smut gags as we I was used just to. About to say, I said, I said nothing rude. <laughs> but I think it's having the mums on, isn't it? Does that to a girl? I know you feel so bad, like sort of making <laughs> jokes about a friend in front of the mum. It's a childhood shame that never goes away. Never isn't it? goes away. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Mahoney. Yeah. No. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, we'll be back next week. But if, of course, you know, like what you're hearing, jump on, rate, review us on Apple Pod. Chuck us a love heart on Spotify, all that stuff. Email us at thebabysitter at novapodcast.com.au because we'd love to hear how you're going, what you're up to, how your Mother's Day was. Yeah, absolutely love to hear from you all. And uh, that's it for another week, isn't it, Sarah? See you next week. See you next time.